Who is the bad guy in history who isn't actually a bad guy? That Roman that gave Jesus vinegar to drink. Turns out that the Roman military gave their soldiers a water vinegar mix to drink as it was good for refilling salt levels after sweating. That means all the Roman did was give Jesus a sip of his own drink, not force him to drink vinegar as punishment in salt. Despite what was portrayed in Amadeus, and though in reality they were musical rivals, Antonio Salieri was actually friends with Wolfgang Mozart. In fact, years after Mozart's death, Salieri assisted with and helped finance his son Franz Xaver's musical education as a tribute to his late friend. A more modern example is the lady that famously sued McDonald's for their coffee being too hot in 1994. That lawsuit gets treated as an example of how oversaturated America is with litigation over small things. As it turns out, however, her situation was extremely justified. She suffered third-degree burns that required skin grafting and had permanent disfigurement. Needless to say, McDonald's was serving their coffee far too hot, and the case very well may have prevented future similar incidents. My tax law professor used this case as an example when I was still in undergrad. He first asked how many people think the amount she won in the suit was justified, and most said that it was total bullshit. He then asked one simple question. How much would it take for you to pour a cup of boiling water on your genitals? One million dollars? Five million dollars? Ten million dollars? Needless to say, almost no hands went up. She deserved every penny and more. My dad apparently because every time we talk it's always. Buddy I dunno know why you think I'm the bad guy. Marie Antoinette, the woman was a spoiled rich girl sure but the whole damn country condemned her despite the fact her husband was and always had been the one in charge of things. According to the legend, her last words were, Sir, I beg your pardon, I didn't do it on purpose, after she stepped on the executioner's foot by mistake on her way to the guillotine. I feel this gives a better picture of what sort of person she was. She was born into the elite ruling class in 18th century Austria and that meant she grew up not being bothered about the problems of the working class. I feel that even as she was being killed, she didn't really understand the reason. Darius III and Xerxes. They're portrayed badly because of Alexander the Great, and also the movie 300. Yeah, in reality their kingdom was actually fairly progressive. When taking over lands, local leaders and religions were allowed to remain however advisory members were sent in to help update settlements, with better economic and civic organizations and so on. Really, they weren't that bad of a kingdom, for that time period standards, and the reason they fought the Greeks was because classically Greek cities had tried to rebel with the support of Greek mainland city-states, which prompted war. History isn't so black and white as Hollywood wants it to be. Neville Chamberlain was widely hated in the UK after the Briton went to war with Germany because of his policy of appeasement towards the Nazi-run Germany when he was prime minister, even being one of the central people who allowed Germany to annex Czechoslovakia, which blew up in his face when the Germans invaded Poland and triggered the Second World War. He was forced to resign as prime minister less than a year into the war due to revolt from the Labour and Liberal parties and handed the reins over to Winston Churchill who was himself forced out of office after the first war because of fears that Germany would rearm. However, due to British laws about disclosing classified documents 30 years after their being sealed, it emerged that Britain couldn't risk Germany's anger during the Czech debacle as they were thoroughly unprepared for war Chamberlain delayed the inevitable which gave the Allies a significant helping hand when the war finally did happen. My history teachers hated this misconception every time World War II came up. Dude had to do what he had to to help his country. More so sports history, but the film Cinderella Man portrayed boxer Max Bear as a murderous psychopath who gladly killed two fighters in the ring. In reality, he was personally devastated by these deaths. In the one he was most directly responsible for, he ended up giving his winnings from his next few fights to the fighter's family. Watched this in history class and my teacher brought this up as how movies and articles change facts for a better story. Billy the Kid wasn't a good guy by any means, but was a victim of negative propaganda by the press at the time. He was orphaned in his early teens and fell in with the wrong crowd. After a brief run-in with the law, I think he was lookout for a small robbery, wasn't even part of the main crew, 
He didn't want to wait around six months or a year for a judge to make their way to the tiny little town, so he escaped jail and ran. What teenager would act differently? He ran to Arizona looking for work. In Arizona he found work, but was still one of the youngest there. A bully in a bar picked on him for weeks until Billy got fed up and shot him. On the run again he goes back to New Mexico. In New Mexico he resorts to stealing to be able to survive. He steals some horses from a prominent rancher. Instead of prosecuting him, the rancher hires him. Billy is thrilled and works hard. He is happy because he has a legit job again. The rancher had a corrupt as shit rival who had the local law in his pocket. He was related to the sheriff. The rival rancher killed Billy's boss in the street. Billy and his fellow cowboys that loved their boss decided this was not okay, and the Lincoln County War started. Billy is the only one of the men on his side of the war to have been in every battle. Eventually, Billy felt he had accomplished his revenge mission, so he settled down with his best gal. Problem was, she was Mexican, and he was white. His girlfriend's brother didn't like Billy being with his sister, so he tipped off the law as to where Billy was hiding. The Lincoln County Sheriff showed up in the middle of the night and shot Billy in the back. There is a lot more to it. For example, when Billy was in Lincoln County Jail, he talked to the New Mexico Territory Governor. The Governor promised him a complete pardon if he'd be a witness in the trials of the people from the corrupt rancher. Billy agreed and testified. The Governor then went back on his promise and left Billy to rot. So Billy killed the jailers and fled again. That governor was too busy getting an ambassadorship and writing the book Ben-Hur to keep his promises. The Roman Emperor Gaius Caesar, better known as Caligula. Hell of a smear campaign his enemies did. Most likely brought upon himself because of his intolerance to the Senate's corruption and or lack of effectiveness. The crazy stories? Most likely made up or were willful misrepresentation of something Caligula said. The story about him making his horse consul because he was crazy? Misrepresentation of him mocking the Senate by telling them his horse could do a better job. Not really a bad guy, but Reddit has a tendency to judge medieval early renascimental famous people as pedophile because they married their wife after the first blood. But at the time the average age for a girl to menstruate was more 16 to 17 so they weren't fucking 12 years old. Also it was common among kings to marry legally, to forge an alliance, but to not really live as a couple since many years after. So even if King X really did marry a 13 years old, there is a very good chance that for a good five years they didn't even use the same room. Not so much history, per se, but Pontius Pilate was definitely a real dude who gets a bad rap by a couple billion Christians. Even the Gospels recognize that he really didn't want to kill Jesus, but the Sanhedrin, ruling class of high priests in Judea, more or less forced his hand. What's more, Pilate allegedly looked for every out to not put him to death. First he refused to hear the case, then kicked it to the ruler of Galilee, Herod Antipas, then gave Jesus every opportunity to wiggle out of the charges. It was only after the insistence of the Sanhedrin, refusal of Antipas to hear the case, and Jesus' stubborn commitment, or even desire, to be crucified that he passed the sentence. The whole deal with Pilate washing his hands after condemning Jesus was basically a gesture to I did everything I could to avoid this, it's on you. Spain Got blamed for the 1918 pandemic because they were the only country honestly reporting on it. Other countries did not want to look weak during World War I and wouldn't report on it. Turned out that a farm in Kansas and possibly the French trenches were the actual origin. In the new report, Humphreys finds archival evidence that a respiratory illness that struck northern China in November 1917 was identified a year later by Chinese health officials as identical to the Spanish flu. Also, second nomination, Warren G. Harding. His administration was very corrupt, he was pretty immoral, and there were some policy mishaps, all of which have put him on many lists of worst presidents ever. But... His administration also reversed many of the authoritarian policies of President Wilson. He liberalized the economy. Wilson had imposed many controls during the war, allowing recovery and a boom to emerge from a major recession. He issued pardons for political prisoners like Eugene V. Debs, who had been jailed for protesting World War I, while Wilson, a notorious racist, had moved towards segregating the civil service. Harding moved back towards integration and tried to hire more African Americans. 
He lobbied for a federal anti-lynching bill to let agencies like the FBI go after the Klan. He also arranged a formal peace treaty with Germany, since the Senate wouldn't ratify Versailles but Wilson wouldn't propose anything but Versailles. His rather humble philosophy on the role and character of the presidency is also refreshing when compared to the messianism that infects the office today as it had under Wilson. Despite the scandals that rocked his presidency, he was incredibly popular at the time, and for good reason. Who is not the bad guy in history? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.